Edison Crane returns from a long trip to the Himalayas to find his life is in shambles. Did the perfect man with the perfect mind finally make a mistake? Or has the world's smartest man finally met his match? Let's find out in our review of Prodigy Slaves of Mars number one from Dark Horse Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Prodigy Slaves of Mars number one. To answer the question, no, the perfect mind didn't make a perfect mistake. But who better to destroy the perfect mind than a villain who's thought of, well, just about almost everything. That's the question Mark Miller asks in Prodigy Slaves of Mars number one, and the answer just might shock you. Or maybe not. I mean, you kind of know what to expect. But otherwise, it's a good comic, so let's just enjoy it, and let's dig in. Prodigy Slaves of Mars number one begins with a flashback to East Africa about 20 years ago. We are introduced to Senator Whitney Crane, who is Edison's father, as he's held hostage by a group of paramilitary mercenaries who burned down the Senator's research center. The center is designed to solve crucial societal problems, investigating technology and the effects of everything that's going on in the world. Before his capture, Senator Crane puts out a call to his genius-level son, but the Senator and his easily defeated kidnappers are surprised to see that his rescuer is his... If you're new to the character of Prodigy, Mark Miller's opening prologue tells you everything you need to know in an expertly delivered sequence. The good Senator is a leader, he's cool under pressure, and he's focused on solving problems, both big and small. Edison, likewise, is also a cool under pressure character, he's very focused on solving problems, and as the title suggests, he's a next level genius who would give Reed Richards and Mr. Terrific a run for their money. Without saying it out loud though, Edison doesn't have a loving relationship with his father, so the entire scene gives you a little bit of sci-fi-ish sort of action, drama, and record fast character development for new readers to jump on perfectly. The issue now cuts back to the present, where we meet an adult Edison Crane returning home from the Himalayas aboard a cruise ship. Edison catches the eyes of everyday people when they see the world's richest and smartest man, especially when he decides to, out of the blue, jump overboard to prove he can outrace the cruise ship back to port. Edison loses the bet due to unforeseen circumstances with some choppy currents that he didn't realize were there, but he's all grins and whistles when he enters his company headquarters soaking wet. Admittedly, the scene aboard the cruise ship is kind of odd. Miller explains that Edison, through this scene, is trying to prove his ability to mentally calculate everything from ship speed to the peak performance of his body to his ability to time a sequence of events down to the second. The scene is great for informing new readers about Edison as a daredevil and somebody who's you know, occasionally wrong, but it's strange because it's unclear what it proves if he decides to succeed in what he's trying to accomplish here. Maybe it's an indicator of his ego, but it's unclear from this introduction. I mean, you're certainly invested in the character as somebody who's unique and interesting and far more capable than the average human being, but at the same time, it just sort of seems a bit random. And then it all falls apart. Edison finds his access to his company's headquarters has been revoked due to a order directly from the board of directors. When he storms into a meeting with those board members, he learns that the plans he left the company to keep it running in his 11th month absence have all gone wrong. The company's stocks are tanking, and Edison's cavalier attitude about his absence has put everything in a bind. In effect, the world of his company is crashing down, and from all accounts, it's Edison's fault. Then the situation goes from bad to worse. Before he leaves the office, one of the board members pulls Edison aside to tell him his father died over a month ago. A little bit later, Edison speaks to a military officer involved in his father's super secret project involving travel to Mars and beyond. The official death report lists Senator Crane's death as a suicide, but the officer is sure he was murdered for something he found on Mars, even though there's no record of what it is or why the senator was so terrified of that discovery. In pretty much rapid fire succession, Miller puts Edison's life in a tailspin. His company is failing, his public image is ruined, and his estranged father is dead before the two can make amends, even though Edison fully intended to sort of mend the relationship on his way back from the Himalayas. The speed with which it all falls apart pulls the reader into Edison's predicament and generates a fair bit of sympathy for the guy, which helps get the reader on his side and root for his success or redemption arc or whatever journey he needs to go on. Later, Edison sits in his penthouse researching the circumstances of his father's death. Suddenly, he receives a video call from someone named Froth Schroeder, or Schroeder, who claims to be the mastermind behind Edison's troubles. For his next amazing trick, Schroeder is going to blow up Edison's apartment, giving our hero only 10 seconds to find an escape. We conclude the issue with explosions, great, 
damning and manipulated murder scene evidence, which is worse, and a visit with another estranged relative. Overall, Mark Miller delivers an effective thriller with a little bit of a sci-fi twist to please existing Prodigy fans, serve as an excellent jumping on point for new readers, and give everyone who picks up this comic something to get hooked on right from the first scene. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. Stefano Landini delivers a marvelous set of grounded, realistic set of visuals that look like a cinematic adaptation come to life. You can absolutely picture this kind of comic being turned into some kind of Netflix series or a film or something to that effect, which, uh, let's be honest, that's probably the point anyway. That doesn't mean it's any less good. It's fantastic. Landini's figure work, gestures, and movements are all on point, and Michelle Asura Sakorn, I think I'm saying that correctly, <laughs> that's a tough one, her coloring is exceptional. Taking a step back and looking at the big picture, if you're a new reader to this Prodigy title, you might wonder which back issues do you need to read to get familiar with Edison Crane. Realistically and technically, you don't need any. Mark Miller did such a great job telling you everything you need to know in this issue that you pretty much have everything right there laid out in front of you. However, never going to discourage you from looking at back issues or picking up a trade. So if you want more Prodigy and want to start right from the beginning, check out Prodigy Volume 1, The Evil Earth. And there's a link in the written review if you're so inclined. Final thoughts, what do we think about Prodigy Slaves of Mars number one? It's a whiz-bang introduction to Prodigy when his perfect life is turned upside down by a villain who destroys his life with a genius stroke of sabotage. Mark Miller covers the basics with expert efficiency before kicking off a very taut and engaging thriller. Plus, Stefano Landini's grounded art is excellent. This is a solid issue from front to back and another winner for Middle World. Therefore, Prodigy Slaves of Mars number one earns a 9 out of 10. We have yet to find a bad comic coming out of the Middle World lineup. So here's hoping that winning streak continues. Looking forward to it. But what do you think? Did you read last year's Big Game or the recent Nemesis comic? Give us a thumbs up if you like what Mark Miller is producing and leave us a comment below with which Middle World character you're looking forward to seeing or reading next. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the great review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.